hope you guys are awake or awakened by now. Um, this demo reel already summarizes a little bit of what I'm going to tell you during this presentation. Um, I'll give you a short introduction and then the long one. I'm Michelle, I'm 28 years old and I'm the owner of Vimi Visuals. Um, what we, we are visual designers and we, uh, we are specialized in live visual performance and content creation for festivals, events and brands. Um, I'm also a board member and VJ of uh, VJs.com. I'll tell you more about that later. Um, I'm absolutely convinced that we have the greatest job in the world. And in my presentation, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to convince you in six reasons. Oh, this thing is sticky. <laughs> but, all right. And on my left hand, hand side, you see Robin. Um, he's my assistant, and he's going to do some live visual VJing, so you get an impression already. Um, First, I have to get a little bit into the background and to um, the history. Um, in 2009, I was an Erasmus student. Is anyone of you familiar with Erasmus? All right. <laughs> um, as an Erasmus student, of course, it's about studying, going abroad, learning about a new culture and new stuff in school. But it's also really about a lot about partying. And I went to Barcelona, where you have lots of clubs. And on the weekends, we would be invited to lots of international parties with international people from all over the world. And that's actually the first time that I got in contact with visuals and, and animations. Because in Barcelona, you had these huge screens where all these uh, visuals were projected. And that's actually the first time it caught my eye. Maybe I didn't see it in Holland, but this was really the first time that it caught my attention. But the thing was, I saw really ugly stuff, like seriously, like, 3D ugliness. I imagine that there were these kind of like super uber computer nerds that usually play 24 hours of games and now decided all of a sudden that they could make some visual art. But to me, you know, it didn't have any composition, not any taste in color. It didn't, you know, it, it didn't give me any emotion or feeling. But it's quite easy to complain because you remember, you know, when you're watching a, like a soccer game of your national team, You'll yell at the TV. It's super easy to complain. But I didn't, I felt like I have no right to complain about these visual artists. Just that way I should do it better or at least try to do it better. So the first reason was the drive. It's just to try to do it better. Um, as I told you, I was an art academy student. I studied illustration, which is just 2D art. So we made lots of posters and um, I would print screen t-shirts and bags and we, my friends and I, we would really be get out there and organize exhibitions. We invite the whole world, but really the only people that show up at the exhibition are your parents, your friends, maybe a few, a few classmates, and if you're lucky, a few people that are interested in art or illustration. It's, it's really hard to reach other people, reach other audience. So it was a good way to start um, projecting my visuals in clubs. So I just went up to some local bars, like with really tiny screens, with just 60 people out there having a beer. And I told them, hey, I'm a VJ. I'm coming here to project my visuals. I had actually no clue what I was doing. But it was just to sh get out there and start showing off my work to a different audience. And actually, it worked. <laughs> in the back, you see some old animations that I made. Um, it's fun, because that way, if you pr start projecting your visuals in a club, you get um, uh, interaction with your audience right away. You, if a DJ is playing a love song and you're doing something with a heart, oh yes, you got it. Or if um, I remember that there was a DJ and he was doing a performance with a Game Boy. He would make music with a Game Boy. So I made all these animations with a Game Boy and we would just play together and he would improvise his music to the visuals and the other way around. So that's kind of how it started, just to show off my work to a different type of audience, to reach out to new people, new, uh, yeah. N new people. Then we get to the third reason, which is probably the best and the main reason why I'm doing the work that I'm doing. Um, it's variation. I became a freelancer to do something different every day. I cannot do the same thing d day in, day out. Um, I'm going to give you some examples. There are loads of examples. Um, the first one, imagine one of the best museums in Amsterdam is Van Gogh Museum. It's located right in the middle of the museum square. There are many, many um, visitors every day. Um, and on Friday night, they have a special uh, opening. And as a um, project manager from VJs.com, every Friday, first Friday of the month, we uh, 
provide a new uh, performance. So what we do, we, we set a PJ couple, we work with new team, and we get to work with Van Gogh's um, our paintings. So imagine you get to work with super high res resolution paintings of Van Gogh, and we, with a team that is given to us or that we came up with, we create visuals. And it's really thankful because as a VJ, you could be a little bit of a screensaver, but in a, in a museum, there are people are actually at a museum, they have time. They come there, they, they're not in a hurry, they're not in a rush, they take time to watch the art. They will stare for minutes at one painting of Van Gogh, but they will also stare for minutes at your visual performance. They will come up to you and talk to you, they take selfies with your projections. It's, it's a, a really thankful job to do. But that's on a Friday night. So on a Friday night we do something cultural acceptance. But then on the weekends, <laughs> we're on the dance festivals. Um, most of them are like the hardcore and hardstyle. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but they want to see skulls. They want to see fire. They want to see change. They want to see blood. It's total different content that we have to provide for those um, festivals. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of Intense Festival. This is a stage from last year. What we do um, three months in advance, we get the stage design and the, the team, and we have many, many gatherings with the whole creative team. So think about the stage designer, the show, the show director, but also the lightning guys, the people from the audio, um, special effects, laser, pyroworks, everything comes together. And um, for three months in a row, we work on custom content for not only the decor, but also the team. So for example, here on the side, we, we use these screens, the eyes, the head of the clown, and also the side one. Um, <laughs> um, so we perform for about 12 hours. <laughs> it's not, okay. <laughs> um, okay, Do, are you guys familiar with the closing shows at these festivals? <laughs> so, <laughs> There was I'll show a you a little example and then I'll explain about it. Free. Here, the spirit of madness watched over all the funfair visitors. This place no longer exists because people simply forgot how to have some fun. A flicker of madness remains in the hearts of those that care. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a little explanation about this. Um, at the ending of the uh, festivals, you'll, you usually have these closing shows. They're about 20 to 16 minutes. Um, usually, like during the day, we do perform live, but these closing shows are programmed way before. Um, you have to imagine that a show that is 16 minutes, um, every minute is 60 seconds, and every second contains 25 frames. So it's 16 times 60 seconds times 25 frames. We get a whole list from the show director, which every frame describes what party is doing. So I get a list from lightning is red, laser is green, here is fireworks on the left, the video has to be on the right. Everything is written out. We have to program that for every frame, so it's gonna be super synced. That's not possible life, you have gotta do that before. But that way you get these spectacular shows and it's super fun to work on. And it's, and it's all, um, for people that know, it's run by time code, so everything is synced through the seconds, through the frame. Um, so we had a sculpture acceptance uh, performance in the Van Gogh Museum. In the weekends we are performing at the Hardstyle and Hardcore Festivals. And then I'm going to show you some more examples. 
Um, for example, we have uh, Vrienden van Amstel Live by Jantje Schmidt, which is something totally different again. <laughs> Here we created all these hand-drawn uh, characters <laughs> of elephants and bread crumbs. And this is a performance for Vrienden van Amstel Live for the Dutch people. That It's where all uh, Dutch famous artists perform. It's about 40,000 people that go there for 10 nights in a row. It's it was quite fun to see our hand drawings that we animated on these huge uh, projection mapping. Um, because we had these two buildings and then the middle. It's a fun project. Um, but also business events nowadays, more and more they're, they're providing screens uh, during, their, um, during their parties for their um, uh, how you say it? employees. So they need visuals, but also the Dutch Design Week, they had a few years back, they had this huge three six seat projection mapping with 12 beamers. The rendering took forever, but it was a really cool effect because people stand in the middle and you have visuals all around you. Um, but also, Dance for Life, um, it, it celebrates its 10 years anniversary at the, one of the most beautiful venues in Holland. It's called the Concertzaal. Um, many famous uh, Dutch artists pr um, performed there and for every single song we made new content that all fit to the, to the team. Um, And um, yeah, we have some theater stuff with uh, the Dutch comedian uh, Guido Weijers. Uh, on uh, New Year's Eve, he's providing his uh, show um, on TV where a lot of Dutch people or millions of Dutch people watch this show actually. And he makes jokes about the whole 2015 this was. Um, but before he has his live show on TV, we did about 40 uh, theater shows where we practice and practice and practice. And for every single joke, we made that new visual, that new picture. And every cue we got these jokes running and um, with our officials we would start his joke or make it stronger. Um, and another theater show we did was from a, for a jazz artist, for Wouter Hamel, we traveled about 35 theaters in Holland. So it's so much different from a comedian to a jazz artist to a hardcore festival and then we're dr hand drawing animations again for another project so it's, it's fun to do something different every day um, and oh yeah we make video clips too so we do some fun stuff So we had all this creative stuff, but now we got the technical stuff. Because being creative and making custom content is one thing, but the, on the other thing, you gotta know your technical stuff. So does anyone, you know, one of you know what a front of house is? Okay. Um, the front of house is a place at a festival or event which is usually located in the middle or all the way in the back. And that's where everything gets controlled. So from audio, lightning, special effects, video, everything. So you will see probably the DJ in, in front of you at the stage, but really everything is controlled in the back. And this is usually, <laughs> I just got some pictures from the internet to give you an impression. Um, it's usually a man cave <laughs> with just lots of monitors, computers, um, lots of cable stack, just, I don't know, yeah. Um, <laughs> So it's, it's a guy's environment, but it's my place, <laughs> and I like it. Um, the thing is, what I said, you, you, it's nice to make your creative content, but you gotta know your shit. Because uh, when I'm up here, I need to, do, new, need to know all of this to, in order to get my projections out there. So you gotta know your computer specs, you gotta know your video errors, your video codecs, your video mixer, your MIDI control, you gotta know all of it. Because as a VJ, or especially as a girl, you don't wanna go up to the lightning guy and ask him, to program your videos, that's stupid. You gotta know it, and it's fun, because that's the only way to get your art out there and to show it. Um, right, fifth reason to convince you, crisis. 
When I graduated back in 2010, it was all about crisis. People were having no jobs, there was, there was no money, there was a black hole when you graduated, and not only for Art Academy students, but also for people who studied law or doctor or whatever. There was not a lot of work. But this is the environment that we work in. There's no crisis there. It's only festivals. Every weekend there are festivals and events, and it's all sold out. And they all have screens, and they all need video content, so they need VJs. There's lots of work. Um, and one important thing is one of the most uh, best Dutch export products is DJs. And in a DJ, it's, it's, it's boring to watch that because it's standing there alone. It needs a whole show. So the lightning guys and the VJs, they go hand in hand with this best Dutch export product. So there's, in my business, there is no crisis, or I don't think there has been. Now we get to the sixth reason, and it might be a little cliche, but it's team up, because for every single project, we team up with a new, new uh, group of people, because everybody has his own skills. And for every assignment, you need the new people, and it's fun, because you get to work with different people every time. Um, you know, I can con create content, I can do some VJ managing a project, I can do some live performance. I have absolutely no clue how a camera works or how to set up a green screen. I need to know my, I need to have my other people for that. So it's good to combine and to strengthen each other to get every, the best results every time. <laughs> All right, I wrote this presentation in 2013, so I might need to update it a little bit. But this is a self-portrait that I made in 2009 when I was studying in Barcelona. And it's about my dreams, about wanting to travel the world for my work. Um, I, I'm dreaming of these huge stages where my VJ heroes are playing, um, where there is this live stream on YouTube where everybody can watch it, all these huge DJs are playing. That's my dream. I want to go there. I want to go there with my team. But actually, last year, I already got to travel the world for the first time a little bit. So we went to Indonesia, Romania, and so it's a little bit getting there already. Like, I'm, li I'm living it. <laughs> Um, and this is the world map for this summer, and I hope there will only be more locations adding it to it. So I have to adjust, I have to make new future plans. Um, and one of that is that I want to grow with my company and have more people stack with Femi, and I want more Femis on my team, so we can even do more larger projects, uh, larger stages, more projects at the same time. For example, tomorrow we're doing now this Saturday we're doing a stage in Turkey, but also we are doing hosting two stages in um, at the Emporium Festival, and next week it's Intense Festival again. So there's lots to do. So who's convinced? Okay, one, two, three. All right. So is there anybody who would like to be a VJ to show up their work on these huge stages? All right. Well. This Saturday, um, at the campus party, there's a VJ Academy workshop. My colleagues are going to be here. Um, there's a workshop with where you can um, create your own visuals, but also learn a little bit about the live mixing. And I know at night there is a party where these visuals that you created during the workshop will even be projected there, and you will be able to VJ live to the music. So you get to experience a little bit about the VJing. Yep. Are there any questions? Come up. How, how long do I take for one visual event? It really depends on the budget <laughs> and the festival. Um, a festival like Intense Festival, we, we work about two months with about five people. Um, but there are other events that we just plug and go. Because we have a library that gets bigger and bigger. So we just go up there, we plug, and we're ready to go. So it really depends. because. Um, uh, dance festivals more and more wanted to create the whole uh, experience, so they want the whole team to go, not even in the merchandise, but also in the team songs, in the stage, and then they need the custom content. So that's when then we work for longer. For Emporium, for example, which is this Saturday, I think we work for about three weeks straight. So, yeah, depends. Good question. More questions? Any other questions? I'll bring over the mic. Hi. 
So apart from the creative type of work, like illustration and drawing, what are the types of roles uh, in your team to do the whole production? Uh, you mean like software, for example? Or uh, yeah, software, yeah. maybe project management. But n I'm not talking about lighting, but to do the visuals. Yeah. Um, you got to know a little bit about rhythm, rhythm to do the live performance. But to create the content, most of us are working with uh, After Effects nonstop uh, to create everything, to composite. And there are a lot of 3D designers. They work with Maya or, tr um, three or Cinema 4D. Um, because um, I started off with drawing, but to reach these stages, I'm not gonna get far with drawing because one, it takes too long, and it's this certain type of um, style that, isn't, that doesn't fit with these huge dance festivals. So for that, I need to create this com more computer-like uh, animations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Don't be shy. It's okay, you can ask her anything. Anything. It's now or never. <laughs> All right, I think, uh, I think uh, that's a wrap then. Oh, Thank you sweet. so much for your very inspiring talk. This is, you're a very admirable young woman just like producing your own everything and just going out there in the world and spreading, right <laughs> spreading your creativity. It's really, really admirable. Please give a very warm admirable applause for Michelle. <laughs>